All right, I think we're good to go. Um, Greg, you can hear me all good? Get us gold, Holly. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. FSKB has teamed up with Chief Makers Greg Layden to help you out while you're stuck in isolation. Greg is Melbourne-based, so he's in lockdown as well, um, and he's assisted some of Australia's leading executives in building their own resilience toolkits with the lessons he's learnt from pushing himself to the extreme. Today, we're kicking off the series with the topic, Build Your Own Lockdown Resilience Toolkit. So I'm going to pass over to Greg now. G'day, Holly. Good to see everybody here. We might just wait a little minute while people uh, get online and talk a little bit about um, why we're doing this, right? And I think, you know, I've been discussing this with SSKB for a little while now, just over the last week or so, and this was really about them sort of going a little bit extra, doing a bit more for the for their people and their customers and the, the real why behind this. You know, I think down here in lockdown, it's 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 a challenge, right? I think there's an enormous amount of us that are really battling with maybe motivation, um, maybe you feel flat. Sometimes you feel wonderful, the next day you feel terrible. These are the kind of things that we're all full of feeling, a bit of overwhelm, maybe even a bit of anger along the way. This roller coaster of emotions is hard to stay on top of. And in chatting to SSKB about what they can do to go the extra mile for their customers, we, we spoke about bringing together just a few tips and tricks to help us get through some of these challenges. Um, I'm in ISO, just like everyone else. I'm a father of uh, three kids under five. Uh, we, we don't, we're not permitted um, workers down here. So we, we've got three kids, my wife and I tag teaming work she works i work three kids at home for the next six weeks um we don't have a big backyard so we're, we're trying to you know really try and look at how to make all this um stick together but there's been one really interesting thing has happened is we we've taken a lot of things that we we coach in the uh, in the corporate world and, and in elite sport and what we've noticed is that we've slowly gotten better and better at uh lockdown um, we're feeling pretty good most days. Of course, there's ups and downs. This is not perfect. Um, I'd love to say by the end of this session, you'll be walking away in flow 24-7, but um, I think this is a very, very different kind of existence, and we'll talk a bit about that as we go along. Now, uh, Chiefs, if you've got um, ideas, you've got comments, anything there that you want to share, um, please uh, pop them into the comments. We'll try and answer them um, either as we go or at the end, um, and we'll talk through that. There's also uh, a template for you to download. There's a link there in the Facebook comments or on any of the post comments. Just you can download that so that you can build your own uh, resilience playbook at home whenever you like. So, Chiefs, what I want to talk to you today about <clears throat> is something that I've uh, coached in both elite sport and with executives. It's called SARS or Smart Automated Response Systems. But let me tell you where that comes from. <clears throat> in 2009, um, I had the, the privilege of going completely off the grid into the remote mountains of China and living with the Shaolin monks. Now, imagine austere situation, you know, snow falling on the ground when I first got there, um, training you know, from dawn until dusk every single day, I mean, when I turned up, I had a basic understanding of martial arts. I was there um, inside for about three months in what was generally, other than the other um, other athletes there, was complete isolation. Formed into a little group uh, led by my master, who was a, a very diminutive figure, a little man called Master Bao or Sifu Bao. And, um, I mean, I went in not knowing an enormous amount around about Kung Fu. Um, and so what... Of course, they always do, and anyone that's ever seen any sort of martial art is that you know that it's an art. It's an art and a science, and you have to learn all the moves. You have to learn how to defend, you know, certain blocks and certain punches and certain kicks and certain stances that all allow you to move with this fluidity um, under pressure. And so what I discovered as I went along and I learned all the different moves, one after the other, is they keep building up the level of difficulty. So first of all, you do it by yourself and you feel like, to be honest, you feel like a bit of a klutz doing all these sort of shadow boxing to yourself as you learn all these moves. But the idea, uh, as my Asifu said to me, is to get this into the bones so that it's automated response, these 
to automated response systems of block, punch, block, kick, step back, avoid, defend, whatever it is, what it becomes is in many ways, it's like an analogy for life. Well, we actually have these things set up in our own life to deal with um, all the challenges that life throws us. So when a difficult conversation at work, we go to a certain response pattern. Same with this. And in the world of being inside this, uh, this Shaolin Academy, we practiced day in, day out. The level got higher and higher and higher as we went. Until the day that they say, well, now's time for you to put everything that you've learned into practice and you have to have a, you have to have a fight against another, uh, another athlete. And for those that know me, I'm, I'm more of a lover than a hater. I'm not really a fighter. <laughs> Some of my friends would laugh that I've ever even done that. But what was interesting is not so much that, um, I was in a fight in the remote mountains of China, but more what actually happened to me mentally in that moment was, I immediately, because we'd had these two to three months of consistent training, I immediately went into this state of flow. I didn't get into a place of anxiety or nerves. And actually, when I was in the ring fighting this other character, um, who was like a, a rather large guy and he was, he was actually quite a scary-looking rooster to, to sort of face off against, I just I just slipped straight into this automated response. And... I won't go into the detail of the fight here today, but it's to say that it worked out really well for both me and for him. Uh, both of us defended really well. We both attacked at the right times. Um, sure, there was a bit of blood and the things around, but the most important thing was in those moments under pressure, what we'd been taught actually played out. And so that's what's actually in many ways what we also teach, uh, like sporting, if you imagine a, a a rugby team or, or, or an AFL team, you talk about green, amber, red zone. You talk about attack, attacking and defending. And what you have is a different play in those moments. Right, same with a netball team. The way they move the ball up the court in order to go from goalkeeper through centre and wing attack up to the goal attack is all about a set of moves that are deeply ingrained within the athletes and the team as a whole. Now, one of the things, well, how does this apply to us in a normal environment where we're in a house, right? You know, this is not where I normally work. This room is now, this is my baby's room. I had eight months old. If I turn my camera around, you'd, you actually see a cot behind me. And that's, that's how different this world is. But what I noticed is that the game plan that I used to have for the normal life that I ran, which was working five five and a half days, sometimes six days a week. My wife also working three days a week. Kids generally going to kindergarten, a little bit of daycare. Well, that game plan all of a sudden doesn't work. You know, Mike Tyson had that that classic quote. He said, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And I, I sort of feel like, in a way, that's what's happened. The playbook that we've been using doesn't work anymore because the game plan is different. It's actually evolved almost like it went from I don't know, maybe it went from pro to amateur, amateur to pro. It's, it's a different world out there now. And so what we've got to do is build our own new playbook, this response pattern to what's happening in the world. Now, let's just say back in the old day, and I'll, I'll talk about what would be one of those plays right now. Let's just say, you know, prior to lockdown, if you felt like, you know, you needed, you really needed a hard workout, you might just arrange with your partner if you live on your own, you just go and do it. Now that doesn't quite work because maybe there's some things that are holding you back, like you can't leave home for too long or maybe you've got to look after kids or do, you know, catch up on some homeschooling or something. So the new game plan, the new playbook has got to be slightly different. The thing is as well is that your responses must come, um, must be in response to an emotion that's going on for you right now. And I'm going to talk you through this in a bit of depth because this is where I think a lot of us really need to pay a bit of attention. This is how you build uh, like an automated response. So this is about building a resilience playbook for you where you can work out four or five things, or four or five emotions that are going on for you right now that are common. It might be stress, anxiety, frustration, anger, flatness, depression, unmotivation, whatever it is. What we've got to do is work out, okay, if that's coming, what's my block and then what's my response? How do I actually get onto the front foot here to beat this? And instead of sort of suffering for too long and letting anger 
spill over days or letting depression spill over days. How do I get something that interrupts that pattern, protects me, and then gets me back into the front foot so I'm living a more positive existence? And so this is how it works. I'm going to hold something up before you so you can read. It sort of looks like this. Um, you start off with an emotion. And what we're saying is at the moment, uh, our response is hitting me to the negative emotions. And every emotion, so as I said, it might be, it might be anger, frustration. It might be some sort of depression or sadness. Um, could be anything like that. That's the emotion, right, that's over here. What we know is that there is some sort of trigger that is causing this emotion. So for me right now, I know as an example that one of my emotions is maybe anger or frustration. And the trigger for that is absolutely when I read too much news on social media. Like I know it inside out now. I've, I've done the analysis on that. I can sense it. When I read too many headlines, I get angry. So what I know is there's an emotion and a trigger. What I want to be able to do here is this arrow is where we go from negative to positive. This is where we interrupt the pattern, stop what I was doing that was negative and get myself back on the front foot. So what I like to do here is give myself a little really catchy mantra or phrase of some sort, which goes, okay, let's turn this around. Let's, let's get back into a more positive mindset. And in that space, what I say there to myself as a reminder is no news is good news. It's an oldie, but in this moment, it has a totally different uh, meaning. I mean, uh, no news for me means I can actually just get on with life. So no news is good news is my mantra. And my action then is one of a few things, maybe to switch off, um, to go and go for a walk, put on some music, just to re get, my, get myself away from uh, the grimness of what's going on right now. So what I do is actually not creating myself a bit of a playbook. I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen now so you can you can see how I've actually done this over multiple things. So this is an example of my own playbook. And if you go to the downloads, uh, you'll be able to see that this is there for you, plus a blank template for you to complete your own. And this is what we want you to do is create a really practical set of responses um, to the five, three to five things that cause you the most stress right now. So if you look on the left-hand column here, over where it says flat or sad or angry or frustrated, overwhelmed, unfocused, well, these are the five um, most common or most worrying negative emotions that I would feel over every couple of weeks, right? Um, so every now and then I feel flat or sad or depressed. Sometimes I'm angry or frustrated. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed. Sometimes I'm just unfocused, unmotivated on a day, or some days I get cabin fever. And what I've done there is I've said, okay, for each of those, I've said, well, what is the trigger? What's, what's getting me into that state, that horrible emotion that can linger around for quite a long time? Well, for flat or sad or depressed, I, I sort of feel like it's, for me, this is what it is, a lack of hope in the future. And just missing genuine human contact makes it feel loved and valued. So what I did was I said, okay, that's my emotion and this is what's causing it. What's my new mantra? So there's two little mantras I love in this case. One is that leaders are dealers in hope. And so that sort of gets me back on the front foot remembering I've got to find a way to get some hope. Two is isolation is the ally of depression and store growth, right? And so what I've got over here then is some actions some really good positive actions that will get me out of that negative emotion into a much more resourceful kind of state of mind. So if you think about this here, as I said, the, the emotion and trigger, that's, that's the negative stuff. That's almost like someone's coming at you with a punch or a kick and you're like, okay, hold on, I've got to block that and now I want to come back on the front foot and be in a really good position. So I get the mantra, the, the thing that changes me around, right? It gets me back in a much more positive mindset and then some action, right? I've already spoken a bit about angry or frustrated. Um, you might notice this one down here, unfocused, hazy, um, unmotivated kind of stuff. Like for me, that is when I'm, I'm sort of lacking, there's a lack of urgency or flow in my work or activity. And there's a, I don't know if you remember the theme song to Top Gun, like there's that highway to the danger zone. My, my kids love that song. And we play that song when we decide to go and do a bit of a workout in the backyard, all of us together. And that's just my reminder that when I get in that space, what I need is just a bit of focus and a bit of flow 
to get me back into gaming, workout, music, art, dance, setting some short-term work goals. These are the kind of actions that immediately turn me from unfocused, hazy, hazy and unmotivated to more in flow, a bit more focused and really enjoying work. Same with cabin fever and anxiety. That's about being inside and isolated. My thing is the old I want to break free from uh, Queen. I often put on that music when I get in that space and I want to go and do a ride in a nearby park and feel the environment. So that's how you build from the negative to the positive. Now, the other thing now is how do you turn that into perhaps a bit of a game plan for what you'd want to do on a day-to-day basis and stay positive? Well, the right-hand column now, this is your guide to how to stay in a good positive mindset all the time. So if I do practicing gratitude just about every day, if I do organize the odd five-star dinner, which is where my wife and I get a friend, a couple of friends who are really good friends, and we organize a dinner where we all get dressed up, we all sit down, we cook the same meal, drink the same bottle of wine, and we sit down together um, at 8 o'clock after the kids have all gone to bed and we spend a couple of hours just having a good old yarn. Um, these are some of the actions that we take. But if we know if we do all the stuff that's in that right column, we're probably almost never going to feel the items that are on the left, those horrible negative emotions. This in many ways is us, you know, they say the best form of defence is attack. In many ways, what that's happening on the right-hand side there is us saying, okay, we do these things, we're not going to be in a really negative place. Now, as I said before, it's not perfect. Like th- this is a really, really tricky sort of situation we're in right now. But that is a, 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 an idea about how you can do that. So what about the colour coding? I'm sure a few of you sitting there saying, what's these colour coding things? Now, what I did here was I thought, is there anything on here like any any of these emotions that I think are actually quite concerning? Like, uh, that's a bit of a red zone kind of thing for me. I don't want to be in that space. And I said, the flat or sad and depressed and the cabin fever, they're the ones that worry me the most because they feel to be the most intense and the most worrying. So I color-coded them red, which means pay real close attention to that. Well, that's a code red when that comes up. You've got to take action. You've got to really make a move. And then the others, I said, angry or frustrated is one. It's probably not as detrimental as the others, but it's it's pretty annoying. So it's an amber. And then the other ones, the overwhelmed and the unfocused. Um, I'm not so worried about them, that, but they are ones that I want to fix up. So what I did is I gave them um, a colour coding. So what you can do here along the way is um, download the template and said the link is there. Just go through and work out the top uh, four or five emotions um, that are getting to you on a day-to-day, week-to-week kind of basis um, and then say to yourself, okay, what's the emotion? What's triggering that emotion? What's a cool mantra that's uniquely me, that means something uh, for me? And then what are some actions I can take to actually shift that around? And the whole idea is we go from that a negative station and emotion, which is pretty unresourceful, and we build through to one that is highly resourceful, that is more in flow. And then what we've got is a little playbook that we can kind of keep handy, maybe stick up on a wall, on the fridge, put it in your pocket, whatever works for you. And then you can say to yourself, okay, right, in the moment when something goes wrong or I start to feel one of these, I've got an automatic automatic out. I've got a response when the pressure comes on. So that is how um, you build your own automated response system. Um, would love to hear any comments. Please pop them in the comments um, so that we can have a good look at those and I can answer any of your questions. I'll try and have a look at some of those uh, right now and we can have a look at uh, what's going on. If anyone else has got any thoughts, please uh, let me know right now and I'll try and answer some of your questions. Hey, Holly, do you, uh, did you see any questions come through there? Just having a look now, just seeing if we've got any. I don't think so just yet, um, but there's a slight delay um, 
on that cool. end. Cool. Well, it looks like um, maybe nothing coming through just yet. So why don't, <clears throat> oh, good question from, um, okay. So Andrew Betty, thanks for the session as always. No questions, more than a thanks. Okay, thanks, mate. Good to see from you, hear from you. Any tips for homeschooling? Well, um, so two questions, how to, how to do uh, tips for homeschooling? Well, um, look, I think the key there is, and this is my, what, what my wife and I do is um, maybe one of the things around the overwhelm, one of our responses to that is that we've got to do this thing in the morning where we sort of sit down and say, how is the day going to be split up? Because um, both of us have to work. So this morning I worked early, then I took the kids and we did a little bit of homeschooling and then we went to the park. Now my wife is downstairs doing homeschooling and sometime this afternoon I've got to take over and then we, <laughs> we go back and forth. Um we are not in a situation where we're doing um, full homeschooling, but we are doing about sort of two to three hours a day. Um, what I sense is most important around homeschooling is um, the ability to uh, probably probably two things is one work out how you and your partner are going to um, work on that because if if you if you're both having to work, that's that's going to be a really interesting handoff and it's going to require a lot of communication. Um, number two, one thing we sort of do is um, we've got a bit of a whiteboard downstairs and we create a bit of a schedule for the day so the kids also can see that. And they know when they're going to be doing school and, or, or some sort of, you know, doing their letters or their numbers and then other times when we're going to the park and we talk to them about saying, all right, kids, we've got an hour now and then we've got our one-hour break for the day, which is when we're allowed to go to the park and then we're back to doing a bit more. So it's sort of like... Um, in many ways, we try and run the day a bit like a proper classroom where the teacher would have a schedule with certain lessons throughout the day, um, and that's how we do it. Um, it'd be great to have, if you've got any other really good um, ideas around that, it'd be, be good to hear some. Uh, anyone that's got good tricks on homeschooling, please post them in the comments. Um, from Ross, uh, how do monks cope with ISO Full time. Well, I think there's a couple of things which are really interesting, uh, Ross. That is makes that situation very different to now. Number one is that um, when you're there, um, life is just inherently simple. You don't have. You're not trying to run a job. You're not trying to have a family. Um, you do get time, like lots of time, in the mountains. Um, it is quite social um, with the people that are there. Um, so my sense is it is a very different thing. It, it, it is isolation, but it's a very different kind of like, maybe isolation from the world, but not from other people who are around you. Um, the other thing and we're going to talk about this another time is every single day there is meditation, there is yoga, and there's other things which keep you really, really present. So you find that you're actually in, um, yeah, you're in this, uh, flow a lot as well and because of that like, you just feel good all the time I've never felt as present as I did when I was there because there was just no distractions um, this is not what life is like for most of us in this kind of lockdown um, but the lessons are great like that from you know if we're and we're going to cover this uh, next week when we're talking about mindfulness is the lessons around understanding meditation gratitude journaling these kind of things which keep you present in the moment um, are absolutely critical um, uh, as a lesson that we can take from the, from the monks. Josh, uh, do you find it more difficult to maintain your mantras during lockdown? Personally finding it tough to be isolated away from family and friends. Um, Josh, mate, um, to be honest, I've probably gone to mantras more during lockdown, um, but I find the mantra has got to be the key for action. Um, so, yeah, mate, I mean, all my family and my wife's family are in Sydney and Brisbane. Um, and they're talking that we're not going to see them until next year. So, you know, that, that's a that's a blow, mate. Like, a, you can't deny how hard that is to hear. Um, so the the five star dinner that I mentioned there before about, um, you know, getting some family together, even maybe it's um, 
brother or your parents or someone like that um, or your best friends and saying, right, 8 o'clock after kids are in bed, let's do this. Um, we'll do cook the same de- meal, have the same bottle of wine or whatever it is, and just spend a few hours. We put um, uh, we put them up on the TV screen. We put the TV screen on the dinner table. <laughs> to make, and we have this really what feels as close to intimate as you possibly can. It's as close as we're going to get. Um, uh, so, mate, I, I, I mean, I'm an extrovert, mate. I, I'm used to, you know, 20 different interactions with people a week and I'm not getting any. So um, I really feel for you, mate, but I think something like that is important. Um, Stacey, uh, Blanche, we like the mantras. Any suggestions, any suggestions for those living on their own in ISO? Oh, such a, such a good one. I mean, uh, my... Um, I think um, probably the answer there is not so much uh, sort of the answer I just gave Josh, Stacey, it's it's not so much around the mantra but the the action you take. Um, You know, if if you're not finding some way to fabricate some good human connection, I don't think a mantra is going to help too much. We need the action because we require that human contact as much as we can. Um, uh, From Adam Bean, is there something that you manage yourself um, or you work through it with someone else from an accountability angle. Um, so, yeah, my wife and I um, have built these ourselves and we hold each other accountable. Um, if you don't live with anyone, um, so, Stacey, this might apply to you, then what, what I would suggest is getting in an accountability with someone else who's living on their own in a WhatsApp group or something and just saying, hey, what, what are you going to do um, in this situation or this situation? Can we help each other through it? So, um, the daily check-in with my wife where we work out what the schedule is for the day. The other thing that we do at the beginning of the day is we say to each other, hey, um, what's gonna, what's the end of the day going to be like if it's a success? What does success look like for you today? And we put down really two or three things each. And if we tick those boxes, then what that means is we've had a successful day. We can hold each other accountable because at the end of the day, we then ask each, each other, hey, um, how's that going for you? Did you have a successful day? Did you tick those things off? And we give each other um, a bit of a rating and go, well, that's a wonderful day. What are we going to do tomorrow? Next morning we come together and we schedule the day again and we do all that kind of stuff. So lots of communication around the schedule, what does success look like? And that seems to be working for us um, so far. It'll be interesting to see what it feels like, um, you know, months in. Uh Matt Clements, uh, great session. I lead a small team of eight and I'm just looking for any tips or tools that we can use to better help support them through these times. Um, Matt, great, great question, mate. Um, listen, I, I think I put a post on LinkedIn maybe um, about a week and a bit ago about what you can do as a leader for any of your people uh, going through hard times. Number one, uh, and this is from research done by a lady called Katrina McCarter about the number one um, uh, stress for people in lockdown, particularly mothers, is the number one thing is job security. So if you can give some sort of job security around their financial future, that's a big up. Number two, um, you know, I just mentioned before about having a five-star dinner. I think a really great thing would be to reach out and just have um, some dinners or some lunches with some of your staff, just one-on-one, not, not with a crowd, just do some one-to-one stuff, really connect with them, get to know them, make them feel a part of the future of the business. So they know that while this is a tough time, you really are taking the time to just listen to them, to connect with them on things other than work, right? The third thing I think is really important is right now, you might have someone who used to do maybe work five days a week, their partner maybe worked five days a week or three days a week, and their kids went to school. Now, they've got all those kids at home. Doing the amount of work they used to do, plus what's going on now with kids at home, is like it really is impossible. So um, I think what's really important in this moment is helping them understand that, look, total flexibility around hours. And I really hope that you can say to them what we're not expecting you to have the same output as previously because it, it, is, it is nearly impossible. But I think, in fact, I think it is impossible. So maybe put their mind at ease around that. I think those sort of things would be good. Other than that, I'll try and put the link um, in the comments around an article I wrote on this. Um, about a week ago. Paige Allport, uh, recommendations how to stay engaged with mates during lockdown. <laughs> different, 
uh, stay present of nothing new happening. Engagement is low, but very keen to know any tips. Oh, that's a good one. Um, oh, look, oh, I don't know if this helps, but uh, Paige, um, um, I, I tell you what, what I've done with a few mates is we've just tried to post a lot of good memes to each other, we keep some joy and some humour because, you know, when I get together with, with my uh, friends, you know, we don't, we don't want to talk about lockdown anymore. It just drives you crazy. So what you want to do is have something fun to chat, chat about. So we talk about memes or other things you're interested in, maybe holidays you want to go on. Um, I think you sort of want to raise a few topics or a few things, but you don't want it to be too too fabricated. So um, I think some sort of meme or something to just share a bit of joy and a bit of laughter would be good. Um, but I think also if you created one of those dinners, uh, I reckon you would um, – you probably get some pretty good, pretty good chat about the old times in particular. Josh Young, Scott from the kitchen bench might give it a go. Yeah, great idea, mate. Yep. Uh, accountability, good suggestion. Yep. Uh, yes, Stacey. Uh, yes, the spreadsheet is downloadable. Um, I think it's both in Microsoft Word and PDF. Um, so if that, that should be in uh, the comments. If not, um, I'll, I'll track that and we'll make sure uh, it's in there, right? So, um, I'll get the team to make sure that that goes in there. Thanks for your awesome comments, everyone. I've been really good to have a yarn with you. Um, but I want to thank SSKB again for, you know, making this happen. Um, you know, they didn't have to do that. This is a wonderful go the extra mile thing, which I think is a, an excellent thing right now. And, you know, one of the things I, I've been doing is these sort of little random acts of kindness for other friends um, in lockdown, and it makes – Everybody feel great, makes the person who receives it feel good, makes me feel great, and that's what SSKB is doing here, this sort of paying it forward, random act of kindness, and, and I applaud them for going the extra mile there. Next week, we're going to talk all about mindfulness. The week after that, we're going to talk, I think we're going to be talking a little about uh, routines. If any of you have any topics or things that you'd like to cover, we'd love to hear from you. Pop them in the comments here or email me, um, uh, greg at chiefmaker dot com dot au so uh everyone i think that will probably uh sew it up for this week sound good holly awesome yeah great session feedback's been really good so far so awesome cool beautiful right. well what so next teaching? tuesday uh, midday mindfulness um i'm going to teach some really practical things um to work on a day-to-day -day basis the, the thing for mindfulness is well i'm going to plant a little seed is there's a whole range of different ways to cultivate your own mindfulness based on your own personality, your own situation, just like your own playbook. What you want to be able to do is almost have a utility belt, almost like Batman utility belt, that Batwoman utility belt of ways that you can stay more present, be in flow, be more mindful in the moment. And I'm going to try and um, share with you a whole range of different ways to do that. It suits you. Um, from a personal perspective, maybe you don't love meditation, maybe you don't love journaling, whatever it is, but we'll find a way that works for you.